Xbox Record This is a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. Hosted by three BFFs, Daddy Diwali, Chipotle Bear, and Bubble Boy N7. This is Cortana. And remember, don't make a girl a promise if you know you can't keep it. As always, Spartans, see you online. Oh, hello. Daddy D. Wally here. and Welcome to Xbox. Record this episode 63. Joining me as always are the assistant to the co-host and assistant to the co-host number one, Chipotle Bear. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm honestly pretty tired. I had to go back to work this week, which is fine. Work has been great. It's just been early mornings and then coming home and I've been digging a hole because we bought the girls a zip line for Scarlett's birthday. And so I had to dig a four foot hole in my backyard, which is, you would think not that hard, but digging through roots and rocks and the clay soil of Colorado, not fun. And I probably should have rented an auger. That's what my wife suggested. And I was like, no, I don't need an auger. I'm an idiot. I should have rented an auger. So the hole is done. I got the post up today. I got the concrete in. So hopefully tomorrow I can put up the zip line. But other than that, man, happy to be here to chat with you about games. There's been some cool stuff this week. So happy to be here. Yes, yes. Dad of the year over there, because Lord knows I wouldn't build a stupid zip line in my backyard. Uh, Jose, I know how it goes with uh, digging. Remember when I dig that long trench across to find the missing... Oh my God, for your sprinkler <laughs> system? Dude, yes. You really should have gotten a ditch witch. You, dang, you dug like 40 feet worth of trench, oh, man. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Never again. And what's worse is if I would have just started on the outside on both sides and just dug in a couple, like two feet each, I would have found it. But whatever, sprinklers are working. My grass is fairly good except for a couple dry spots due to this heinous hot weather but whatever moving on joining us as always the assistant to the assistant to the co-host bubble boy and seven straight out of his new ten thousand dollar set please bubble boy give us a tour what's going on over there yeah so it's and it's not complete um but hopefully you can see some of it i've got the greatest batmobile um up no there this is kind of hard when it's all in reverse. Um, all of them. I've got the like big old two hundred and fifty dollar one, the little fifty, and then the wait, 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 wait. The tumbler is the greatest Batman. Yeah, we've I was going to say, is it behind there? Is it the oh, yeah? I was saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> got the fridge, got the Master Chief, not Lego, the knockoff Lego. Um, got the trophy that Jose gave us. Of course, some Final Fantasy stuff. What is that? Oh, the, uh, Razor's Crest. Uh, Rest. Too bad that's uh, spoilers. That's no longer. Uh, yep. Some in the Dumb picture, and Dumber but... and some okay. Halo. And I'm not done. Um, <laughs> it, it took a while setting all the LED stuff up. And obviously, I'm not exactly where I wanted to be with all this just yet, but whatever. No, it looks great. Yeah. It looks good. It um, looks great. It takes time. You know, it's in my, my yeah. poster from my office and put it here the like the big Xbox one. I know I have that special edition artwork from the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I have this cool lithograph that oh, yeah. should be right here, but I don't, guys. I don't know if I'm going to go back over there to my little nook over there in the basement. It was like perfect where it was before. But you then need I'd to be, frame it, I'd be, man, so I'd that be, if you move well, it, it doesn't yeah, jack no, up the poster. Yeah, I'm definitely going to frame it. But then, like, I'd be way too close. I can't put the TV over there. I, I just don't know. Yeah, this is. I'm tight. I mean, I've got. Yeah, 32 inches right That's there. That's what with, she said. Yeah. That, well. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, explain your new computer and monitor situation as well. Yeah, everyone, right. so here's then, the update. I mean, I, I let me, wait, wait, let me just tell everyone I was against this Mac Mini Kaka. I was fully on options, board. But, okay, so, uh, starting oh. with the Red Dragon um, keyboard, which is nice. working perfectly. Amazon but, mechanical keyboard, very oh, nice. Of course. I, of course. I, I, I had that and, at 1.2. Um, with the mouse all wired, of course, because can't have any lag when doing these ultra fast <laughs> streams because that's all I'll be doing. The Blue Yeti Nano for the mic setup got the new Mac Mini. Well, I guess it's not new. Well, is that like an me, Apple TV or something? Is that a it's real? It's my computer, computer it's or... the Mac Mini. Come on, man. And then, yeah, Dan drinking Haterade all day today. Star of the show, of course, is the okay, oh, hey. go all the way back back here to. Zoom in to see the 32-inch Ultra nice, HD. Nice. 
monitor, yeah. 4K monitor, very good. Yeah. Um, so, well, I'm Man, that's happy. a huge step up from the Surface. Not yeah. that I need it on the Surface, and, but that's like And, I mean, in the upgrade. kitchen with the chandelier up top, like, wow, everybody. Yeah. See, this is what your Patreon donations go to, is Bubble Boy's <laughs> uh, $100,000 basement and studio. Yeah. So, thanks again to our wonderful donations. Uh, boys, this week we are going to be talking about, uh, funny enough, some PlayStation news, Redfall, Net- I don't, Netflix, I don't know what's going on over there, EA, of course Top Gun. I mean, we can't go we can't go the rest of the year without talking about, talking about Top Gun, but guys, let's jump into some shout outs. Sad, sad news this week. We didn't have anybody write in for any shout outs, Jose. <laughs> But I'd like to give a huge XRT shout out to anyone to anyway to uh, Mama Micah and everyone over at Last Stand Media. Go visit laststandmedia.store, you guys. I placed an order last Friday night at like 1 a.m. I was staying up late, of course, and I remembered, oh crap, everyone over there at Sacred Stimbles and Last Stand Media, their new store had opened. I just listened to their podcast. I went out and got this new knockback logo t-shirt it's pretty cool see i was going the knockback and knockback i think i've told you guys about this is that retro and nostalgia podcast i recommended it to you guys go check it out if you love all things movies or food or pool days or just anything nostalgic i highly recommend going and listening to knockback it's one of my favorite those moriarty brothers uh hosted over there i always give my wife crap i tell her dad jokes that i get from the show and uh, again, huge shout out to Last Stand Media, uh, Mama Micah, Dagan, and Colin for one of my favorite podcasts I listen to. Go check them out. So uh, that's it. I don't I have no more shout outs. I'm sad, Jose. If anyone sad. wants to write into us, you can reach us, <laughs> xboxrecordthis at gmail.com or on all of our social media. DMs are wide open. And we've been getting some follows, which is great. Thank you for following. Yeah. We appreciate the love, but we're getting don't likes. be afraid to reach out. Yeah, even please. if you don't know us, even if you've never done it before, we're always happy to to put out questions and that kind of stuff. So don't feel Jay free. Jay Bizzle. Yeah, come on right yeah, into the we, show. We're stilling. We're, last week was so exciting how many we had. There were so many. I know. So uh, uh, Matthew Kennedy, get in here so we can get you on the show. Guys, let's jump into the warm-up question for this week. Bubble Boy, take it away because Lord knows... This one, I need some time for this one, I guess. You need some time. Well, and I feel awful because we're so late on this, but um, I, of course, as you know, we're all um, based out of Colorado and the our very own Colorado Avalanche uh, just won the Stanley Cup, gosh, almost a month ago at this point now. Uh, and so, of course, all the stories are coming out about like how they're what they're doing with it. And of course, they dented it, um, but they got rid of that guy. Uh, or they didn't re-sign him, the guy that dropped it. So maybe that was an accident? I don't know. Um, but so I wanted to do, what are, what are the top five things you would do? Because, you, you know, if you won or you were on the team, you get to hang out with the Stanley Cup for a day. It's yours to do what you will with. Um, what, what would you all do? Uh, let me go first. Um, Here goes that definitive list, folks. Let's see the what's definitive on The definitive list. The definitive, what's the Stanley Cup, or I, I don't know. Is it here's the, here's the thing. Like I, Thinking about it, okay, everyone knows I'm not a diehard Avs fan. I, congratulations, Avs. I'm, I'm very happy for all of you hockey fans out there. I was a diehard Avs fan back in 96 and 2000. Diehard. I watched all the games, all the playoffs. Like I was obsessed. That's all I did as a middle school and early high school student, right? Like. We had plenty of time to do that. Then the NHL strike happened, and to me, hockey disappeared, and I didn't miss it, didn't care. And then there were no TV contracts. Remember that I couldn't even. Wa- I don't even. I still barely even. That's know That's still how to a watch. problem. To be yeah, fair. exactly. The TV stuff is still a huge <laughs> so, problem. So, so my connection to hockey isn't as you know prominent as your you, and especially shout out to Snelling and Allen who went to Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals. Of course, I mad respect. But so for me, chance. I, I I couldn't even think of anything cool to put on my list. The one thing I think I would do somehow is if I was single, I'd incorporate. (laughs) I don't know if it's where is this going right now? Exactly. So you can you can put you can put two and two together. Let's just say war multiple warlocks one and one or two and two or warlocks and champagne and a party involving the Stanley Cup. That's the one thing I would do. So that's about as clean as I can keep it. Uh, Bubble boy. (laughs) 
take it away after that one, right? You were raising your hand. Well, actually, give it to Jose. Well, and then yeah, I was raising point. my hand because I was going to say, you're you're absolutely right. And that's exactly the strike was when I stopped, too. I think it was impossible not to have avalanche fever way back in the day when they had just moved here and from Quebec. The players, and I can name them all. Forsberg, oh, Wah, yeah. Sackick. Uh, well, and, and sh- big shout out Adam for Foot, what we've been watching. Uh, I watched Sanchez. that. Oshelins. ESPN. Yeah, ESPN has the – it's called the rivalry. Bork. Um, Red Wings. Yep. It, it was amazing. It is as good a TV as you have out there. And if you are a Detroit Red Wings fan or a Colorado, Colorado Avalanche fan, it will be like the Bible to you. If you just like hockey, um, you'll love it. If you don't like any of it, it's still a really, really compelling story because there were a lot of storylines that happened with, with all that that um, – I forgot about, but again, I was the same way. I stopped when the strike, I haven't watched it in forever. I've watched the playoffs the last few years when they've blown it in the second round. Um, but my brother's a massive hockey fan. And, and so again, I was like, well, I'll start when the playoffs start. And I put, I don't remember 20 bucks down on them to win the whole thing at the very beginning. And so felt compelled to watch it all the way through, but yeah. So take it away, Jose. What, what are the top five activities you would do with the Stanley cup? Uh, so I planned a whole day, right? That's how I thought, because you have a day. And I was like, okay, so we got to go morning to evening. So first thing in the morning, just because I have to, because for those that don't know who haven't followed us a long time, we love cereal on this podcast. And my two co-hosts here, they review some of those zaniest and craziest cereals. I admittedly am more of a purist in the sense that like, I know what I like. And if if they give me a solid review, I might go check it out. But otherwise, I'm in that I'm in that cereal aisle, and it's overwhelming. And I'm just like, I go for the classic. So first things, I gotta eat my cereal out of the Avalanche Stanley Cup, like just like like the whole box. You know what I'm talking about? Like, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead style. Whole thing, whole thing of milk, um, and then uh, it would probably be Captain Crunch peanut butter. That's what I decided on because Captain if it's gonna, Crunch peanut butter out of all listen, the cereal. Shh, 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 you had your chance. You blew it. The reason is because it stays hard for a long time, right? That's I feel what she like said. I, I, I know. I should. I didn't have it ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, come and on, come on. Man. I'm over here with my, course, my hands are up. Of course, here. he doesn't have it ready. Whatever he said has it, but when we say something, that's what she said. Pops up, right? No, there we go. That line anyway, was made for that. I know. Job. I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry to the audience there. Um, that's first thing. Then after that, I would take the girls. We'd pack up. We'd go to our pool because we've been doing that a lot this summer. And I would fill it with some ice and put Topo Chicos, and it would be my cooler at the pool. Right? It'd just like be like mini cooler for what a nice Topo pack Chicos. Of Topo Chicos. Uh, it's a seltzer, and I've—I honestly was not a seltzer guy, but I really come to like that brand specifically. Like, I don't really white like White Claw. Claw that much. I don't like White Claw. I like but White Topo Claw, Chico. Actually. I'm all about. Me and Victoria, my wife, we love them. So that's—it would be our cooler at the pool. Everyone would be there looking at us. Uh, it would be awesome. Then we go to lunch at Chipotle, and I would have them make my burrito bowl in the top. Right, I'd still put yeah, it in a tortilla. What, burrito bowl. Well, hang on. Yeah, let me finish. I'd still put it in a tortilla at the end. Right, I just want them to make it in there, so it's in there, and then I'll transfer it to the burrito and eat a burrito because that's that's what I eat at Chipotle. So that's my number three. Then after that, just because I would feel compelled, like I would be a total jerk move to have the Stanley Cup for a day and not do a tour with my friends and family because they would want to see it, they would want to take pictures with it. So I would do a tour, right, and then we'd end the tour at Popeyes, right? We'd all go there together, right? And I, I don't know if I would eat anything out of the bowl at Popeyes because I don't know what I would put in there, but it would be pretty sweet walking into a Popeyes like that'd just be a great Instagram moment. With all my friends getting a spicy chicken sandwich, double standard order. And um, then we would finish off the day coming home and we would have my kids love ice cream. We would eat a giant ice cream sundae out of the top, right? All like the Neapolitan flavors and whipped cream and cherry and that kind of stuff. You notice that literally all of mine have to do with food. Uh, so you can see how much that dictates my life. But uh, yeah, man, that, that'd be quite a fun day. That, like I had a really fun time thinking about no, this. Chance. That is, a great that intro. Is, that's a great. I, I would steal all of your day. I'd make sure they'd serve all of my chicken in. Everything has to go into the cup. Like, but how you, would you yes, order it, it though? Would you be like, be like "Can I get chicken?" And instead of wrapping them, like, just place it in the cup, please. And then you just hold it for them, and then they put all of your food in there, and then you eat out of it. Everything. So I would do everything Jose did, and then add my party at the end that I mentioned earlier at that for nighttime activities, right, Jose? So, <laughs> Mama boy, <laughs> take it away for your next step oh, or well, your day we, with the cup. Yeah, leave it to Chipotle Bear. That was perfect. I I hadn't thought of it that way. I just was like, what are all the things I would want to do? And then I'm looking at my list right now and I'm like, well, you know, what's kind of funny is 
I guess in reverse order. So if I started my day at night and then went down, that's exactly what mine would be like. But uh, that that was brilliant, Jose. I love that. So for me, number five, um, I would take the Stanley Cup on a date. Just me and the cup. Um, sorry, Ashley. Love you. Um, there won't be any adultery going on or anything, of course, because it is an inanimate object. I hope not. Yeah. Um, but I, I would. I would just like have my arm, like, you know, take it to the movies and just have your arm around it like this, like carry it into a restaurant. Like, I, I just think that would be exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and then banking off or going off of that, just like Daniel kind of said, I would use it as my drinking mug for an evening. Probably have to have it get together with friends and family and pour it. It would probably end up just being filled with drink. Um, drink is a Chipotle bear original, um, that can only be served out of, I want to say like a Gatorade. No, it's um, a Cordy Morgs original. We got it no, from Cordy, Cordy Morgs, and his crew. The, they had, um, crunk, no. Gosh, what did they call it? They called it something different. Oh anyway, gosh, Cordy, anyway. you got to write in. And Cordy, tell us write what, in, clarify yeah, that. It was just like all the beer, F all the boy tequila, juice. I think just, is what they called it. What'd no, call it, it had like the lemonade <laughs> concentrate in it, and like a vodka mm-hmm. and Coors. I can't. It was. It sounds disgusting, but it was delightful. Actually, it, it is. Just, yeah, it jacked cra- you up. It's it's crazy. Um, so probably have that out of it. Um, number three, which I guess if we're going for my day, um, what I would do is take a bunch of those like classic family album hilarious pictures with it like we're all dressed up and like it's the kid or it's the dad or the mom and some of them i think that would be really funny um i would auction off time with it would be number two so i guess in my day that'd be mid-morning money hey, maker wanna, yeah right like i i earned this thing let's let's make some more money off of it and then number one exactly like jose with a slight difference um, I would eat an entire box or two or three, however many it takes of, and I would go with fruity pebbles. Out of it. See, and I want, that's my no, favorite see, cereal. Just do I want to do that, but, but I would do how multiples. soggy that would be over the end, dude. Don't Who care. cares? It doesn't matter. It's your day. Exactly. I, you I just care. dump it out. You eat as much as you want, dump it out on it. Okay, would Dan, what cereal pebbles, would you pick though? Cinnamon Tunch, Lucky Charms, um, and then Captain Crunch Original, way better. You're whack with that one, Jose. What? And then I ended off with a new a new one to the list. I would do the oatmeal cream pie. Gosh, I need to go get that. And I need to yeah, go. yeah, and and more to come on that. But yeah, I I think we can all agree. And it's funny because you think everybody's oh you're drinking champagne out of it. Nope. First thing I would do bowl cereal. cereal. Most yeah. That's because I don't drink I champagne do. like normally. Like why yeah, would I drink do something I. I don't like normally? I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. It's just or beer bad. or anything. Like when I, I think just, of champagne, I, I think of like celebrate. It's got to be like you're at a wedding or something. I think of Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Well, well exactly. Well, you exactly. know, yeah. Maggie loves you, shout out to Maggie the High Life. What kind of where we're at in our world is we'd rather eat cereal. Than- <laughs> cereal and seltzers. <laughs> oh, baby. I'd rather do a That's lot of things. Hashtag this week. Seriously. <laughs> Well, thank you, Bubble Boy, for a fantastic warm up. Sorry, if I was more invested in the hockey, I would have thought of some more cool things. But thankfully, Jose just killed it. And I would just copy everything, just serve a bunch of food in it throughout the day. Absolutely. And then have a little party at the end. So if you have any suggestions for any warm ups, please send it our way. Oh, Cordy Morgs, he wrote back. We got it. It was called Chum Bucket. Chum, Chum Bucket. bucket. Straight, he yeah, responded boy. right Thanks, away. Appreciate it, bud. Chum uh, Bucket. We called no, it Drink when Jose and I lived together. Okay, I'm in, I'm asking him what were the ingredients to oh, chum. Yeah. That sounds terrible, by the way. Good gosh, it does. It was. <laughs> it's delicious. It it was what a horrible ex. name. Let's move on, you guys, to Xbox news slash gaming news for the week. And speaking of Xbox, we're going to start with PlayStation, like we always do, because. You know, we talk about all things gaming, food, and the good old days on XRT. So I just I brought this one up, guys, because I wanted to ask you. This is coming straight from the PlayStation blog. Uh, Basically, introducing PlayStation Stars, an all-new loyalty program. Join for free, complete campaigns, earn rewards. Basically, you guys, PlayStation is taking another number from Xbox's uh, book right here, and they are making Microsoft rewards only on the PlayStation side which i think is good you know this just shows how innovative um xbox is with game pass we've now we have play pass microsoft awards now we have playstation stars and other nonsense but i the main reason why i wanted to bring this up is one 
do you have any thoughts on PlayStation Stars? Of course, they're stupid naming conventions. And two, uh, do you guys still keep up with your Microsoft rewards? Do you f- do your quest? Because I do, and I'm already back up. I've already spent probably 60 bucks, and I'm already back up to $70. It is fantastic. It is easy to do. Jose is raising his hand. You go first. Jose, talk to me about PlayStation Stars. So I have a couple of thoughts, but quickly breaking news because I got to give shout out love to Cordy Morgs. He did write back as well. So here is the ingredients to the chum bucket. We used to call it drink in my house and Chance's house. We lived together. It is a 30 rack of like key light or something super really light beer. 30 rack, two liters of squirt. That's the secret ingredient, according to Cordy Morgs. Bottle of vodka and one lemonade concentrate thing from like the frozen section. that looked like the secret of the ooze containers. You know what I'm talking about? All of that in like a uh, Gatorade. The country cooler. time. The country time. And then yeah, one yeah. limeade. A limeade yeah. and a lemonade. And it sounds like it's going to be disgusting. It, it tastes like a honestly like a light lemonade. But yeah, it's oof. you better <laughs> not have cleared your agenda for the next day. Let me tell you that. Um, anyway. All right. Back- Shout out to Chum Bucket. Back to PlayStation Stars. So I think I think the name is very bizarre. I just think, uh, and I'm... I know we're I know we're trying to be more positive on the show. I think, I think they've really PlayStation blown All Stars. That's what I think of. That. Well, I that just game? think they've blown the Navy convention on the the premium thing. It should have been Play Pass. I just think Stars. Like I don't know why. Like Xbox Rewards. Like okay, I'm going to be rewarded. And PlayStation Stars. Like is this a NASA thing? Or am is... I in first grade earning earning little stars? You know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I. I don't mind that they they are borrowing one quote unquote from Xbox's thing. I do love the Game Pass rewards program, and I don't. I'm not as good about you guys about doing what they ask you to do. Like if I get a reward, great, and I claim it right away, but I'm not like actively achieving them. Um, but he, there are some key differences though for people that if you want to read this article, this article by the way came from um, Grace Chen over at the PlayStation blog. Um, two things that I think are interesting. One of them is some of the rewards are digital only items but not games or not they call them, nfts not nfts well repeat. that's what it feels like though because they're calling them digital collectibles they are as diverse as our portfolio of products and franchises they are dis- digital representations of things that playstation fans enjoy including figurines of beloved and iconic characters and from games and other form of forms of entertainment as well as cherished devices that tap into the history of innovation so that that does feel a lot like nfts the other thing they said in here was that some of the ch- some of the like rewards are for like things you do in game including the first person to platinum a game within a time zone which like on one hand i thought was really cool but at the same time like for me i, I would literally literally never be able to get that award right that is not going to happen for me so i think that's a little bit bizarre I'm, I'm curious to see if that will last or if they'll modify that somehow again overall I'm, I'm glad they're doing it i'm happy for the playstation folks i just think those are some interesting changes to the way they're doing it because for those that don't know the game xbox rewards is pretty open-ended like some of it is just you have to play any game from game pass like you just boot it up and you instantly win an award now obviously there are other ones play a certain amount of games complete certain tasks like they get more challenging but um you know like uh, X Bacon, one of our good friends and a frequenter of the show, he, like one of his goals is to be able to spend his money on a Sonos soundbar, right? That's his goal to make to get that many awards. And because they're monetized, because there's a monetary value, you can do that. It doesn't sound like you'll be able to necessarily do that with the PlayStation one, which is interesting. So we'll see. Those are my thoughts. Again, happy for him. I think the name is could be improved but other than that happy for a chance <laughs> i agree really quick i just wanted to say i do think you're you get monetary rewards in there jose and also like i think you're going to be able to spend like playstation like store credit or whatever and then the, the trophy thing i think that's kind of cool but you're right like what are the chances of any of us getting like a thousand out of a thousand by the way i have so many thoughts about achievements like they got it guys xbox you got to change it we need we need updates especially when games like Forza Horizon are adding achievements. I would like to see the 1,000 out 1,000 on the base game. Like, quit doing that. And Chance, by the way, remember when I said they should change the eliminator achievement? I still think they should. I figured out that only, I think it was like 160,000 people have that achievement out of 20 million. Okay, ridiculous. That's 0.08% of players, or 0.8. And then, Chance being one of them. And then they did change one of the achievements. I noticed it said, unlock all of the uh the challenges in a festival playlist and now it says from the base game of a festival so they can do it 
So Grant and David and all those guys who follow me on Twitter, please, 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 please change the eliminator to finish in the top 10 or top five because it's absolutely insane. Bubble Boy, talk to us about play pass points. Well, An even better to, name than stars. Yeah, <laughs> Triple P, baby. Play points. Yeah, play points. Perfect. Um, look, I, they. How, why are we not on retainer at Sony? Like, it took us eight seconds to come up with both of those things. DMs are open. Just throwing yeah, that out, Sony. Seriously, slide in. Yeah, we'll um, switch over to a PlayStation podcast if you guys want to oh, sponsor sure. us. Absolutely. Are you yeah. kidding me? As long as we can um, use Xbox controllers. <laughs> yeah. First of all, they shouldn't change the achievement. I, I would like to submit to you one Alan Pack rant on Elden Ring and how you just tore us a new one because they completely changed the game on us halfway through. And now you're saying, well, they should change this achievement. That has nothing to do with the, 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 Oh my God. That mm, Alan help us out here. Um, so no, they shouldn't change that achievement. You should just get better at the game. Um, and two, yeah, I did notice that because when I booted up Forza this morning, it gave me an achievement right away. And I was like, uh, uh, what? Like, I don't understand. And it was because I was already earning one from the hot wheels thing um, because I had gotten a badge or something, but that it, it goes going back to what Jose was saying that whole like first platinum in a time zone doesn't even make sense because when you get a game that's brand new, you could load it up at 10 PM, you know, Pacific or what would that be? 10 for us, which is like midnight New York or whatever it is. You already, people already have, there's like 0.8 here, 0.1.2 done with this because people get advanced copies of the games. So that doesn't, it, it's a little weird how they would do that. Um, again, yeah, keep ripping stuff off of Microsoft. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. It's not like that idea is copyrighted. So, um, and then lastly, yes, Microsoft does need to get a whole lot better with it, but I, I still crush those rewards every day. I You can see, I think on my trophy list, I have a bunch of games that I have zero trophies for, or Jesus, achievements for, um, because you get rewards for just just play. Play, I think Loot River was the one this week. And it's cloud gaming, so you're not even wasting time yeah, downloading just it. Just start it up. Boot it, it up, and there's and a link right it. there. Yeah, so many things that they do so well, and then this, it's just bad. And I would say, I, I love Bacon's, like, trying to get that Sonos. I would be the simp that, like, if they did this, I would blow all my rewards on it, and they would just be saving money if you could, like, upgrade your avatar with things. Because they want me to pay, like, $5 for a cool hat. That's never going to happen. I'm never going to get a cool hat. But if I was you know, one of the few people that got the elim eliminator achievement and I got something that went on my avatar for that, like a big Sans shirt that said, suck it, D Wally, just get better at the game. And then you can earn this achievement. <laughs> like, I'd get, hell yeah. Spend 20 grand on that. All right. Moving on from the stupid ass eliminator guys, any closing thoughts on play, play points, horrible name, PlayStation. I'm glad people on the Sony side get to experience this. I have bought multiple games because I've gotten free. I've gotten $20, $50 gift cards from. Oh yeah. I've rewards. gotten and game pass ultimate months that you can really, especially if you do some of the other stuff, like, like Bing searches Microsoft stuff, yeah. edge or something and Bing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you can rack it up, but all the monthly and weekly and daily rewards, oh, yeah. did, they just, I I do want to point out one more thing you mentioned. It is easy to just try a game for those. We, we didn't even make this a big deal. The the console streaming, guys, it works pretty dang well. Actually, I was playing The Evil Within because it says to kill seven enemies. And, of course, all of my saves from that game from when I last played it was on the hardest difficulty. So one hit and I'm dead. So I've only got four of the seven that I need for this month, but I'll get to it eventually. It When you're playing on your Xbox or PC, Cloud streaming works pretty dang good. Like I'm even more impressed with that. So we got to give credit where credit is due. Microsoft has done a great job with that cloud streaming. It is so convenient. Depending just on able, your internet. Yes. To just be able to click, try with cloud gaming, get your rewards points and get out. Like it's pretty simple. And now I don't have to download. Also what I love too. And I, and this, you guys probably haven't done this, but I noticed, or I realized that it, to save bandwidth. So I don't go over my stupid, comcast data cap for the, my 1.2 terabytes for the month of gigs of data so my problem is is i've got multiple xboxes in the house right and so i would install them to each and i download them to each and that was just eating away what i forgot i could do install it to one and then you can do a system transfer within your own house and then just that's what i've been doing recently and i can send it to my other 
Xbox is in the house and it's so convenient. It's like little stuff like that. I'm like, that's where Xbox does such a great job. And I feel like they're not getting enough uh, credit with the convenience stuff. But let's move on to story number two, guys. Actually, do we want to talk about this? Because I realized the more I started to read about Redfall, the more I didn't want to read about it because I just want to wait for the game. Do we want to talk about Redfall at all or do should we scrap it? it I, I'll talk add- just just really quickly. I, I did the same thing as you wait, did. Wait. Like I- yeah, well, let me just read one thing that I did like, Jose, and then I'll send it over to you, okay? It says, what's the benefit of co-op? Oh, sorry. This is coming from, oh, good old Havoc, or what's, what's her name on Twitter? Havoc Rose. Havoc Rose, I was right. Miranda Sanchez over at IGN. Redfall co-creator, director talks, mixing story with co-op, player choice, and more. I just wanted to read this nice quote here that I thought uh, was what I appreciated was what's the benefit of co-op other than having a good time with a friend and getting extra character banter was there a particular reason arcane wanted to make a co-op campaign story rather than another single player adventure and then he answers when we started redfall oh sorry what's Jose, can you look up the name of the the director? Sorry. When we started Redfall, I had just done eight years of Dishonored. Ricardo had done four years of Dishonored, four years of Prey. We felt like we needed some kind of creative risk. I like that. Or some kind of change. We always wanted to work on an open world game. We talked about the narrative systems that would involve, that would be involved with multiplayer, with co-op, with characters that would get to know each other over time. We'll talk more about these later. But... Basically, he's just saying they wanted to do something different. And I really, 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 really appreciate this. And I'm really, the more I read about it, the more I don't want to read about it because I'm getting really excited for Redfall. So sorry to cut you off there, Jose. Can you tell me the name of the person answering and your quick thoughts on Redfall? Sure. It's uh, co-creative director Harvey Smith. He was the guy in the interview. Um, and th- this article, if you look it up, it's on IGN right now. You can read it or you can watch the interview there. It's basically a transcript of the interview, but, um, I, I don't want to say too much because I, I say, I did the same thing. I watched about five minutes of this 15 minute interview and I, I wanted to keep going cause it was really, it was really like, I learned, I learned a lot, but I'm a lot like Dan where I just kind of want to wait and enjoy the game. Like I know I'm going to love the game, so I don't want to spoil too much. The two, the couple of things I just want to mention, and I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to spoil this for our listeners is that. The big complaints I've been hearing about Redfall are two things. One is, so traditionally, Arcane has been really good at these first-person, single-player games. Like, are they going to suck now because they're going in this co- co-op world? And really what Harvey said in the interview, which I liked, he said, look, we wrote this game as a single-player game like that's how it's written like you can enjoy it from start to finish with any of the four characters you'll have a great time it'll it'll feel like a complete arcane game and get coming off of prey which i played last year for the first time i'm super pumped about that and then he said the co-op thing is really just more that it, it is fun to play with friends it adds an experience and like dan said you know it's we're, we wanted to challenge ourselves in our writing and that kind of stuff so that makes me really excited um the other thing that i was really excited about was the other complaint people have had is like, how does progression work, right? So if if Dan is on quote unquote level 10 of this game and I'm getting it for the first time and I jump and join him, does that mean I've now completed level 10? And basically what he said that the way the mechanic is right now is that whoever is like hosting the game, the progression will occur for them, but not for anyone else with one big asterisk. And that is items and XP. So for example, if, if my character finds a really cool weapon or I level up while I'm playing with Dan, I get to keep those pieces as I start my game. But when I go play by myself, I'm going to be starting either at the beginning of the story, if I've not played or at the last place that I picked up off, which I actually, the more that I thought about it was, I think a great system, right? Because as much as like it would be cool to jump in and, and continue the game. You miss a huge part of the game and the story if you don't have that, right? So um, all in all, it, I'm just really excited for this game. I was excited when they first announced it. And I th- I just, I love the vampire like theme. I, th- I think the graphics look dope. I really like Arcane, what they've done before. So I'm super pumped for Redfall. I cannot wait to play this. It'll be a day one for me for sure. Yeah, so am I. Uh, Bubble Boy, any thoughts or do you want to move on? To the next I'm getting more excited about it from the little snippets that I've looked into and that I saw. And I just like skimmed this article and nothing that I'm seeing upsets me or makes me panic. I am getting the closer it gets, the more I get excited about playing it. I am 99% sure I'll be playing it by myself and, and possibly dropping in every once in a while. But that's just how I do so. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I, I plan on playing this by myself, but I think it's cool if somebody wants to jump in just to For get sure. some experience. For like, sure. That's cool. But just know ho- this is my world. We go with my rules. Yeah. And I, Dan, we, we've all, we all know that. Yeah, um, and, and Jose, I, no, you I'm were sorry. supposed to use the, uh, the quote from uh, Happy Gilmore there. You're in my world now, Grandma. You see this? Okay, so <laughs> oh, please. Oh, you a world you, glass. Um, yeah. I forget. Uh, oh, I don't even remember you what I was going to Shut the hell up. Uh, you were talking about playing by yourself. And we live in my world. All right, moving on. Bubble Boy. Actually, who brought up the As Dusk? Did I put this in here? Who put? Who I put, put my the, name behind all the stuff I added. I, I yeah. didn't. Here's everything. Oh, oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about um, how we don't need to talk about As Dusk Falls. Let's move on to the next one, Bubble Boy. Let's save that. I, I thought it was more interesting, but after reading it, I wasn't as interested. So Bubble Boy, take it away on our next story. Is it Netflix? Um, so yeah, coming from Casey David Muir Taylor over at IGN. Um, the headline is Netflix is partnering with Microsoft to make its ad supported subscription tier. Um, with their powers combined, you'll get a cheaper Netflix plan. So for one, um, I want to ask, do, do you guys feel like you'll go? Cause what are we paying now? I think, uh, is it 14? Yeah, oh I have the highest gosh. one because you have to to have 4K and yeah. UHD. I have to gotta... say, Bubble Boy. First of all, I'm I'm wondering how you're tying this into gaming. But second of all, um, I'm on T-Mobile and they are still paying for a basically like 75 to 80 yeah. percent of my yeah. Netflix. And thank God because. But to be fair, I watched a lot on it recently. That's all we're watching: Better Call Saul, and now I finally started Stranger Things. By the way, hot take: first episode of Stranger Things dude it was so cheap oh gosh so cheesy at the beginning that that little pep rally oh it's so bad anyway go ahead bubble boy you and netflix well and it 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 doesn't have to do with gaming but it is nerd stuff and yeah we all do watch netflix but what what i think is interesting and it's microsoft and you're a microsoft simp so i thought you'd like it um was so Satya Nadella, um, what he tweeted about it and, and what's going to happen. So he says, We're thrilled Netflix has selected Microsoft, which I think is important, um, as its advertising technology and sales partner. We want publishers to have more long term viable and mo- viable ad monetization platforms so more people can access the content they love wherever they are. I really like this, not necessarily because I need to save another few bucks, but it's two companies like looking at each other saying, I can help you. You can help me. We don't have to absolve one another or absorb one another. Um, They really are just partnering and making it so that they can continue to thrive, which I really like. Um, There's a reason Netflix is, is the Netflix of Netflix things, right. And streaming and subscription. And it was the original one and they started, well, what's better or there are better content. And yeah, and we've talked about this before. My and I said this on episode one of XRT when I was doing the solo cast. I said, "Is Microsoft is Game Pass going to become like Netflix?" Where I was concerned that they weren't going to have enough original IP. But now I feel like they've gone out and done everything. They're going to be great. They're now the HBO. But like everyone's broken off now. That's the problem. And Colin, oh, shout out to Sacred Symbols and Defining Duke. They actually combined an episode this week, and they were talking about how. It's become everything we hated in the first place. We're basically back to cable, only you're just buying it individually now instead of just having your cable company get it together. It it is insane now with all the stupid streaming services. Netflix was great at the beginning chance because they had everybody else's content and nobody was buying into it. But then everyone saw, look at how great Netflix is. Now we're going to have our Paramount Plus, our whatever Peacock, our HBO, like everything left. So Netflix, you're right. Now is in this position where like they have some great original content, but they, yeah, but they're struggling and, for money and they so need Jose, advertising. Because I know yes, Jose, sorry, you want to weigh in, but real quick, because I've said that I'm like at times I'm like, man, I I, I kind of just want to go back to cable. It was so much easier. However, the re when I thought back to it, and and one of my friends was asking me. Um, well, like, why, what do you hate about the cable? I was like, oh, it was Xfinity. I couldn't stand the customer service from Comcast and Xfinity. That's what I hated most about it. Um, so I am okay with it. I think this is really cool. I think we might see things like, for example, let's say, um, Pepsi wants to do all kinds of marketing through Netflix. Great. Pepsi might get to pay for an entire Netflix series now or an entire Netflix movie. And that's more content that, 
I don't have to pay for and you don't have to pay for and we're going to get. Um, I have one other overarching question, like the big reason I brought this up. But Jose, what were you going to say? So I'm actually a little different than you guys on the streaming wars. I'm actually a big fan of it compared to cable. And, and I, 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 I hear you, Dan, about the like having to pay for all these different services. Hey, Jose, how thing. many how, how many things do you have? Add that up. All of them. I guarantee you could have cable for that same price with all that stuff. No, I, I've done the math. I, it would maybe, be maybe. Not, I have, I guys, I have, I have cable and then I just added HBO. Then I have, to, thankfully, I'm in a lucky situation. I have my Netflix for free. And then I did that Disney package where it was like super cheap to do yeah. all of them for that like set price when they Two first started and whatever. I'm still going to be in that. So thankfully, but it's out of control. I, I, I still think cable is know. a good option month for to month. When you do cable, they're like lock you in at two years. No, and, they've, and they've customer, adapted to where it's, it's not like that. So poor at places like Comcast and, but Dish then data caps. AT&T if you're always streaming and... stuff, you run into these data issues. Like me and Jose, we're on Comcast. We have a data cap and there's, I don't I, have a data cap. Okay, well then you're paying for non data cap. Yeah, I but I exactly. am exactly. So cap. Jose, so Jose, had that that extra fifty or what is it thirty? It's thirty dollars a month. Add that to what you're paying for all of your streaming. I guarantee you that is that is more than what you would have paid to just have cable. And but all might but, be, but he gets exactly what he wants. But here's what I really like, man. I I like two things. I'm being honest with you. Two things. I like one that it creates competition, and that's just me being a pure economist back in the day. That like, oh, I more like more services. It creates competition. That's why we're getting good shows. That's why we're getting these great originals. And yeah, it does suck when you're like, shit. It's on and some cock It's ones. on Paramount, but Disney. I have to pay Paramount, right? And 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 I know that not everyone likes all of them, but I like the competition piece of it. I also really I love, agree. and this is the I difference agree. from cable that it is available anywhere. Uh oh! Any device. Bubble boy, did we lose Jose? Are you still here with me? Here, what are you going to say? Here's you say, the "Oh, here's the bit. Here's the difference, <laughs> Gail. Is I get to um, choose I what I want to watch. Yeah. Bubble boy, I got to go back though. Oh, he's back. Okay, he's he's got a frozen face. He is back. Chipotle Bear, are you back with us? You, I'm, I'm watching. I heard you the whole time, and that's not what I was going to oh, say. You, by the way, you froze. <laughs> and oh. you, we, we Technical oh, you guys, My internet was this, fine. He said Harvey Smith. Oh, that was. <laughs> I just read that note. So yeah, he was asked. He's good. Get the name of the guy. I put it in the chat. He didn't even read it. He made me I didn't say it, see it anyway. Until just now. The reason I like it is because I like I like the fact that it's available anywhere on any device at all things. And I mean this like literally my phone, my Xbox. I can stream Xfinity it Stream has an app. You can you can watch whatever you want but, on it. But it's not the same thing as what the other ones are. You it's think not. it is, but it's not because we have Direct TV Stream too, and it's not it's the same not. thing. He's absolutely so, right. He's absolutely right. Uh, anyway, so pregnant pause. The, yeah, sorry, I couldn't. I could. I almost clicked the wrong one. Here's the other question I have, and this is, might be. I think this is cool. I'm curious to know what this implementation is going to look like, though. That was what I wanted to say. Is this going to be that Microsoft is going to like digitally alter things in Netflix shows as an ad placement? Oh, or I didn't this, take it like that. Well, I don't know. I'm asking. Is it? I think, is it so? I think it's both. I think they can do that. That's what I'm saying. Like, if Pepsi wants to like throw in everything they're drinking is a Pepsi drink, everything they're driving is a Nissan. Like, I think that could be possible. I I think they're just like more. Hey, you're gonna help us with the the tech and the nerdy side of adding ads and letting people choose. You get a bunch of ads at the beginning that you have to watch. Is it more like a traditional? Um, cable where there's ads in between and stuff. Um, I don't really care. I, I'm at first I was like, oh god, here it comes. Like, what's happening? Did Microsoft just buy Netflix? No, they're just partnering. Um, and so, Daniel, go ahead, and then I want to ask my question. Okay, I was gonna say tying into gaming. I think this is great for Microsoft. They're obviously this is a big deal. They're partnering with one of the biggest streaming companies in the world. It's gonna make them a bunch of money. Microsoft as a whole company, I feel like is in a great position. We don't have to worry about them in gaming. To them, gaming is a side thing where that it's giving so many people peace of mind and not stress because like you guys do what you do. We're not gaming will make us money, but it's not our, you know, it's not our money maker. But what it, they just it's just a, a bonus, a part of their whole business structure and plan. So whatever, that's great. I could talk about this whole streaming versus cable thing way more and the pros and cons of each i we could do a whole episode on this i do want to say with cable though you guys i can record the show 
as it's happening and I can watch it right away. And then my DVR has a great feature where I can just fast forward through the commercials whenever they happen. That is the one thing I think cable does offer over streaming it is you can watch it right then and there. You don't have to wait. I don't have to wait a day or have to wait a week or have to wait a certain amount of time before it airs for certain shows. Okay. I, I still think the, you could win by having cable and select view uh, uh, or select few of the streaming services. You're going to spend the same amount. It's out of control, Jose. I don't even want to imagine what you're paying because you've got Apple, Hulu, Disney, Netflix, HBO. You had Paramount, and you're paying another thirty dollars. That's one, two, three, four, five. We'll say six times fifteen. What, what's the math on that? How much is that? I, so I'm, that's I'm insane. Assume, that is no, insane. I'm, no, listen. Hey, I'm telling you, I, I spent about two hundred bucks. Thirty. Holy shit. That's Jose, see right there, Jose, that's more than what I pay for my internet and my cable with and my apps. You're paying too much. I, I, I pay I one so. I pay 160 a month for my internet cable with DVR, and then I'm paying 15. But for that's the thing, dude. I don't HBO like the stuff that you're watching on cable. That's the problem. I'm not gonna pay for stuff I don't want. Bravo. You don't watch Stupid. Bravo. <laughs> um House Hunters. Stupid. I know you. I know you watch all of that stuff. You know what's so ahead. funny? I when I we were where we were um, in a hotel room a while ago, and they had cable, of course, and that's all I watched was HGTV. I was like, I don't even know what these other channels are. What? What? Why does it's it matter? Addicting, it, especially when you're looking time, for a house. Like, yeah, can I really not just watch this somewhere else? I think end of the day, because we don't need to argue about how this forever, easy is it. I see you having Some, to open up the TNT app and Kaka like that. Okay. Like at the end of the day, what I think more than anything, kind of going back to what Jose said, what this does is it allows Jose to have exactly what he wants for the cost that is acceptable to him. But baller over there. gets exactly what he wants. I don't get what I want. He's absolutely right. Ever really? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so the, the whole reason I brought this up, or at least something that I thought would be fun, what are two partner companies that you would love to see? Like if so-and-so partnered with so-and-so and you were like, this company is going to take over the blank for this, um, what would you want to see? I'll start it off and it's something that's never going to happen, but it's just pie in the sky. I would love to see Aurora Public Schools partner with Popeye's Chicken to do all their lunches and breakfasts. <laughs> Out of all the partnerships, I think that's actually that's somewhat amazing. realistic that's to get into one. schools. Remember when we had Chick Fil A in schools? Do they still do that? Yes, and Taco no, Bell. Don't. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Get yeah. Popeye in there. Gosh, people go crazy. And Subway and sandwich. blackjack. Pizza. Oh, do you remember that? Those cold cuts and the chili cheese burritos. Oh, the glory days, the good old days. Go ahead, Jose. I can't think of any partnerships. With that. Uh, that I mean, that's on the spot. That's kind of hard. I mean. So thinking about like the future, I've like jokingly told Victoria for a couple months now, but I'm actually kind of serious that my next car, not anytime very soon, believe me, will be an electric car. It just makes sense. Yeah. In today's not only like electric economy. car, you guys, it's going to be the Apple electric car. Guaranteed. He's not getting a Tesla. He's not getting a Ford. He's not well, getting a Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's he, funny you say that. So I really like the company Rivian. I don't know if you've heard that company, but Rivian's a new electric company that's out. I really think their SUV is dope. I like it a lot. They have a truck. Aren't they struggling too. though? Like I thought I heard something. Something that no, I, I everything I've seen and heard that they're doing pretty well. Their pre orders sell out and that kind of stuff. And I've seen a bunch of reviews on their stuff. If I didn't go them, I do like the Ford Lightning as well. But anyway, back to Rivian. Uh, I, I would love to see them partner with Apple because if they had Apple integration in their car and I already like Rivian, that would be that'd be kind of my dream scenario. So I don't know if that's gonna happen. Yeah, I heard a, a rumor that Tim I, Cook a took a ride idea, in man. one this week, but we'll see. I've never Tim... heard of this company before, and it is really cool. Yeah, they have cool the the truck is pretty cool, but Anyway, we can talk about electric cars another time. My dream partnership, um, not really a partnership, Nintendo goes third party. That That's what I would love to see. Let's move on to the next story, Chan. So again, going to not answer the question, but... No, that's a partnership. <laughs> They're partnering with Xbox and PlayStation to put their stuff multi-platform. There you okay, go. Okay, well, I didn't understand. I have one last question clarify. for you too, and then we'll go on, because I, I wanted to ask this, and I this put it on, I actually topic. tweeted Xbox to record this, is... Do oh, you yeah, think that it. this partnership has anything to do with Netflix wanting to get into game streaming? Like I no. think that's a weird. I think I I think well, it, there's something. I'm sure that's there. where the conversation started, right? Because or what Microsoft wants in the long term, but I don't think Netflix. Why would Netflix, if they want to do their own gaming thing, in, incorporate Game Pass? Because that's what Xbox would want to do. Is like, hey, can we get Game Pass in your in Netflix somehow? Like, 
It, I, Maybe. I, what I'm what I'm saying is that I think it is the tip of the iceberg here, and that yeah, it's just the first of agree. things to come, and I love it. And of course, they'd be dumb not to spin the or wheels, yeah the i like on this. i like what chance is saying and then think of it this way also like hey guys we know how hard it is to get into gaming maybe you should just let us handle that for you and we can show you what we can do to stream you can have your netflix studios but put those games into game pass and then we can stream that to you through your netflix and just have that as an app within an app maybe that's what you're what you're thinking i there. think it's a lot like what sony did with bungie right like hey here's here's the experts on this this long-term yeah. um, online let's just buy them out model. Keeps yeah. coming, doing coming, what you're coming. doing hey you guys we're gonna leave you alone we're gonna pay for it um keep doing it and call it ours all right well bring us up to the next story there uh, bubble boy with ea um, I apparently can't because my Google Chrome former EA if CEO I remember devs right, yeah. who don't focus on microtransactions are the biggest boop, 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 idiots. That being said, they are also the most beautiful and pure, brilliant people. And this is coming from Adam Bankhurst over on IGN. Bubble Boy, talk to me about this article and why you decided to bring it up. Do you want me to read the well, tweet? No, I got, I got it back, and I okay. think it's, I think it's fascinating that the guy had the courage to say that because he's really calling a lot of people out when he says, "If you don't add microtransactions, you're kind of an idiot," right? And he uses some different words. If you look, if you actually go and read the article, which is coming mm -hmm. from IGN. It, it's a that's a little taken out of context because he absolutely clarified and he was saying it a little differently. Um, I personally don't like microtransactions for the most part, but he's 100% right. He's saying if you're not willing to capitalize on selling a dollar here, a dollar there, 50 cents there for something that consumers are willing to buy and they want, you're just not maximizing what you're what you're trying to do. You're not taking your product and getting it in as many hands as possible in as many ways as possible. So I think if you look at that and you're like, Oh my God, he's calling all these people out. Like he is, but he's really not. He, and he's, he does go on to say how, like, you know, way back in the day when I first started, there was, it was kind of like the cooks and the chefs are in the kitchen and then the waiters and everybody else are out there and they don't mix. Like all the developers are over here and the marketing team is over here and there is no crossover what they do they do what they do they do um he's saying that's just not how it is anymore um <clears throat> and so people get really uh, luckily attached to their work and they don't want it changed at all but um i i got to agree with him if you're not willing to consider it and figure out ways to do it i think your game or company might not make as much money yeah, and unfortunately, like whether we like it or not, like that's where games are heading. It's the free to play microtransactions. Season pass. We're going to see more of that. I mean, I feel like Forza, whatever this motorsport is going to be, that's just that's it. And then we're just going to get updates to Forza Motorsport, and we don't know that, but that could be the case. And then Halo Infinite. This is the only Halo game we are getting on Xbox Series consoles. It is infinite for a reason. They are going to add to it. This is a live service game. Um, and I agree like things it, it he, he's kind of right. Like if you're going into it just to make a pure game and you're just going to sell that one little piece, yeah, good luck. I mean, it, you better have a really compelling product and then maybe you'll make money off of it. But uh, Jose, what are your thoughts on this comment? Which by the way, of course it's somebody from EA because they make billions and they make more money on them. The mutt packs that Jay Bez is buying and the well, yeah. FIFA and all but those. That's why he's things. the one to say it. Yeah. And so I have two thoughts on this too. Uh, one is one is I think that um, you know when we we talked a little bit about how some we talked a lot of Sony Studios actually I don't know why Sony over over Microsoft ones but they're talking about how like they have to focus on one game or they're like we're not doing this because we it's so expensive to make games now I mean that is a reality like that as much as we want all these features in games we want ray tracing and all these things that isn't free and it's expensive and um you know they have to find a way to make that money up so I, I think this is very appropriate for a lot of the discussions we've had the other part is i think so i don't know what episode it was but it was very early on in the series there was an episode we talked about microtransactions because cordy morgues actually brought it up it was one of his like topics and we were pretty down on them and i and i think we still are when they're predatory right when they when they make games imbalanced right where you can oh, pay to oh guys i gotta admit the stupid mass effect three packs 
I bought so many of those things. Oh, I'm embarrassed. Actually, yeah. it might have even been worse. It might have been Andromeda. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh my it's God, that's terrible. terrible. Um, terrible. But but I think I think what we were coming to realize is, as quote unquote adults is that is that it's not I don't mind microtransactions when they are reasonable like, and what we want. And fun. Right. And and like like even when I was playing Fall Guys with Bacon, like I don't really plan on playing Fall Guys that much. But if there was like a super rad Master Chief thing and it was like two dollars, I'd be like, Yeah, I'll pay two dollars. You know what I mean? Like that I don't mind. You know, I think I think where it got shady for a while was when they were targeting like kids who one don't know better and parents who unfortunately didn't like how to know how to like tie down their financial stuff better. And so they were getting these like $40,000 bills for these stupid phone games and stuff like that. I think we're kind of moving out of that era a little bit, at least on the mainstream platforms and that kind of thing. So I'm not opposed to them. And I, I, in that, in that mindset, I do think John Ricciatello, that was his name, by the way, the EA CEO, um, isn't wrong in that, but it, it is a little bit sad at the same time that there was there was something so pure about having games that were just it was the game and there was a story and there was a start and an end and you just enjoy it. But I don't I don't know how often that's going to happen in this modern world if you want to be successful in a place where everything depends on every dollar you spend, literally. Yeah, but there are still experiences like that. We we just had two recently, Cuphead. Yeah, Elden Ring. Uh, yeah, totally Elden, agree. Elden Ring, crazy. Uh, the TMNT, like that. That's a, a great game, and it, it is yeah. what it is. So, but as far as is it going to make you money? Maybe that's how it the, it should be reworded. Is like, do you want to make money in gaming? Well, and that's what <laughs> if you read the and you don't have to read the article, yeah. but that's it. The the line that they took is a little taken out of context, but the guy that wrote it did a good job of going back and explaining like he he does put it back into context. So it's not as bad as just like you're yeah, an idiot. No. You shouldn't yeah, make no. games it, if you're it, not going to. And it makes sense. So uh, great discussion on this tr- microtransactions. Bubble Boy, of course, we need to talk about Top Gun Maverick just past Titanic as Paramount's top grossing film. I... <laughs> I didn't know this. I this was news to me. Wow. Um, so the film has now earned six hundred one point nine million at domestic, while passing Titanic's six hundred point seven. But put in perspective, think about six hundred point seven million back in what? What was that? Nineteen ninety something. Eighty two, like, right? Eighty three. Um, uh, it was a little bit. No, it was well, like, and that's what, and I don't know Go adjusted ahead, for inflation, yeah. but still, and I think Titanic had how much more time did Titanic have to earn? Ninety seven, right? Like, was, huh? Nineteen ninety seven was when Titanic oh, came out. Yeah, it was I mean, this off. movie's been out for over a little over a month, right? Not was it? How long uh, do you think Titanic? It was, was Memorial in Day. For? It was Memorial Day. So yeah, so a month and a half basically. Oh, Titanic was didn't it like re release too? It, at some point yeah it did re-release in theaters after the vhs came out remember like they it was a two vhs set and everything remember that it, it's crazy chance but this is so cool and you know what i'm i really am happy i'm i you know you guys think i'm just the biggest tom cruise simp and i and i am but at the same time he does get a lot of unnecessary hate and people make fun of his personal life and whatever that's his own life like do whatever you want to do he makes fantastic movies it's nice to see him getting a huge this is the biggest movie of of his career and he's what he just turned 60 and congratulations to him you cannot deny that he doesn't go all out with the movies and there's something special when you go see some of the more recent tom cruise movies and kind of flipping from him jumping on the couch in oprah to where he is now like congrats like you got to respect the game so jose do you have anything nice to say to tom cruise are you gonna say i mean 60 is like 20 in vampire years so he's really like there it is he's also a vampire (laughs) but boy do you want anything else that congratulations top gun maverick no yeah i do i think it's really cool i think it's neat that they waited to make sure they did it exactly right and who would have thought like seriously yeah but they I'll give did. You that. They, who would have thought made, that this would have blown yeah. up like it did? It made so much sense the way they did that with the story and, and, and Goose's kid, and it was perfect. Like it was just so and that, expertly and was, yeah, well done. So and I don't good. think it meant to be a cash grab. Yeah, like it, not it at all. Seems like you know that they they finally someone was like, "Okay, Tom." <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> we'll no, no, it was this. him. I read that it was him rejecting numerous scripts to be like this. Again, going back to yeah, him he, learning from film, he's yep. he, he's like, 
that's not a good script. We need to keep giving me something well, else. After that mummy remake, he had to. Oh yeah. That, okay. Like that. that was the one miss. I completely agree with you on that one, but like that's, that's such a great point. And who would have thought 36 years later. And, and it was incredibly smart. Think this game was, or this game, this movie was supposed to come out like right in the, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And then they held it a year and then they held it again. Yeah. And yeah. then like, pretty they couldn't reshoot a bunch of scenes oh okay. like, uh, everything so, blew away so like, like when we're impressive yeah and like when we're watching this like th- these guys were two years younger at, at least at the at, than they are now when when they're promoting which is kind of wild to think about so huge shout out to top gun if it's still in theaters guys i'm gonna go see it this week i need to see it once by myself do it five times in the theaters i tweeted about take that, some nerds so. clusters with you buddy just, just have a, a night to myself real, so just, real quick do not have you guys clicked on the next link don't click i on have it not if you haven't well okay, i don't. already did kind of but no, i didn't don't. count them i already Jose, did you I'm, I'm at the top part of it but i haven't looked at it what's yet. your question uh, let's move well, into the, the closing you. story do you, do you know how many different standalone metal gear games were made uh, and 30. it says right at the top. I do you know how many top. ideas Hideo Kojima has in his head? It's infinite. <laughs> I said 30. What's the answer? Thir- Jose, did you have a guess or you already saw it? I already saw it. I'm not going to guess. Yeah, it's it's 35. Oh, man. I was close. Yeah. And I really didn't read it. Which so is, last wow. story, Bubble Boy. We are looking at the complete list. Of, co- of course, you guys, we need to bring up Hideo Kojima uh, into the XRT podcast. I mean, we are a product. Oh, yeah, big of fan of the show. Hideo Kojima, an official XRT podcast or an official X, uh, Hideo Kojima production. Um, the complete list of Metal Gear games. I didn't know there was this money, but at the same time, it's not surprising. Bubble Boy, do you know on the top of your head, or did you go through and count how many of these 35 that you have played and completed? I'd yeah, like that's the that's what this site brings you to is like it's like a checklist thing. And I hadn't done that part yet, but I'm looking through and I think I only played like the mainline numbered games and as well as the one that was on um God the PS Vita. Game Boy Color. Yeah. <laughs> um what was that? The Metal Gear. Oh, I can't even find it on here. What would that have been? Like the PSP or the Vita or PSP, what are you talking that's about? That's what I meant. Yeah, PSP. Uh, I saw it. Was it? There's a Game Boy Color one called Metal Gear Solid, and then Peace Walker. That's what it was. Oh, you played Peace Walker. Peace Walker. Peace Number twenty-five. Jose, Jose, what about you? Uh, uh, I've played two of them. I've played two and four. Wait. What? Because for, for many of the years when, when they were like big, I didn't have a PlayStation. And I just, I, and here's a, like, I know this is a hot take for here and everyone's going to get mad. I think they're cool games. I like the games. I like Solid Snake. I just never got into them in the way that the crazy mass community has. Like, I think it's yeah. a cool idea, but like, and I, I liked four. Four, I think, was so cool. And it was like, it was like cutting wait, edge wait, wait, graphics. Wait, wait. Did you just play one to four, Jose? No, I played number two just and number you, four. Only played number two, two and, and number four. four. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, I misheard you. That makes me sad because there's a lot that ties into all the other games with four. But I mean, if it hit for you, that's good. Congrats. But very cinematic, almost too much dialogue, though, <laughs> especially four. My gosh, that was that was out of control. Chance, I've played and beaten seven of these games. So Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear yeah, 1, we- 2, Metal Gear 1 on GameCube. Um, Does that count as a different one? Is yes, that the GBC that would, number 7? No, no, no. no. Yeah. It, it, it's the one from, um, what, what was it? Who made it? Uh, Silicon Knights. That's right. And then I beat Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, and Metal Gear The Phantom Pain. I, I, I have... Uh, Peace Walker, I have not beaten. I actually, I think I tried to start it on. I have it on 360, and it's backwards compatible, but I have not beaten it. Yeah. Uh, very. Oh, I guess though. I did do Ground Zeroes as well, and yeah. I tried Rising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear some people really like it. Favorite it's one. Exactly of them my all. point, by the way. Exactly my point. They're good. They 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 are wacky and they are out there. But are they God's gifts to gaming? I don't know. I feel like I feel like. Absolutely, Metal Gear Solid One, right? Chance like that—that that started everything. It's, but then it's after- so hard not to choose that one. And have yes. we not done this? It's I so swear good. we've done this. Yeah, and if we, we haven't, have. we need it's to. It's the best. MGS One. It's is the so best. hard not to pick one. You think of the Psychomantis 
stunt oh, thing. Yeah. Think of like fighting oh, Ocelot. Bosses, you, just Raven. that opening level is, is so Behind amazing. Deep. I I don't I it does I don't know. I don't know. It four was like the pinnacle of what gaming could be though in terms of storytelling, graphical fidelity, no, no, no. Controls, Last of Us chance all those things. Uh, Last of Us, man. That was PS3 too. I I just man, it <laughs> It's so hard. It, that's like an actual Sophie's yeah. choice, choosing between one and four. But I think so the problem 1A, with four, I think the problem with four chance is it was a lot of watching. Like I feel like one it balanced it a little bit better. Four, you would literally go like an hour without lifting your controller and oh, just yeah. watching something. Yeah, the end that. especially, and the loading was crazy long yeah. too. Oh, <laughs> the PS3, that cell architecture. Guys, any closing thoughts on the MGS series? One's but the best, Psycho Mantis. Let's yeah, I just I had no idea there were that many. Yeah, neither did I. And I th- weren't the rumors of them? Didn't they just tweet something out about like, aren't they re-releasing them or something? I I think they are. I I think Konami had just tweeted something and and it was the picture of makes sense. That? Yeah, I I'm pretty sure they are. So maybe we'll get a chance to. I don't know if I want to play those Nintendo ones. Guys, let's move on with what have we been playing and or watching and i'm gonna start off right away because i got a hot take you guys i have been playing resident evil 8 i've been streaming it pony has also been watching all three nights of my streams i'm about uh a spoiler warning spoiler warning spoiling warning i'm a i'm i'm at the reservoir somewhat like three quarters of the way almost done guys i i don't I am shocked that this was on our game of the year list for both of you. Bruh. I, I, I am, I don't get it. I'm not gonna lie. Resident Evil seven to me was way better. It was You're more interesting. Down here. It was way more interesting. That's from Resident Evil. Uh, that was, it's, I feel like way more grounded, uh, compelling, better setting, more spooky, I tell More me spooky for sure. And they made a point. They were like, we I, think we lost players with how scary seven was. We need to tone that yeah, back. But, but I don't, I don't, but here's the thing. I don't need Resident Evil games to be more spooky or more actual and oriented. That's not really, I guess I shouldn't put it like that. I guess just a better story and better writing to me, this game, the best word I could think of is campy and whack. And to me, that's not, I just, I, tell it's tell me am i wrong like i i feel like Very the story wrong. is so out You're of wrong. control and lady Demetrisk was there for five minutes and um i i don't get how you guys think this is better than eight tell me tell me why this or sorry than seven because i think this game is whack like i really think the i think the ethan is somehow even more annoying and is he takes multiple stabs everywhere oh the hand, the hand part. Wait, what? 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 Uh, he's constantly getting stabbed. That. And, that is a little weird. And but he just he walks like everything's fine. And just the writing in general, it's it's so weird. It is so out of control. It, it seems like I'm playing a, a cabin fever story versus a well written uh, nope from or what, what was the one from. What's his face? You know what I'm talking about, Jose. He, nope is the next movie of his coming out, but that. Oh, Jordan Peele. Yeah, Jordan Peele. Like that great reggae movie. And then now I'm getting Cabin Fever. So talk to me. Why did you guys like eight so much? Don't spoil it because, like I said, I'm only at, I'm up to the reservoir. I just saw the fish. I'm trying to low, uh, let, raise the. Let me, thing. let me do it. Go first chance because you played actually more than I did on this. Here, here's what I loved, Dan. And, and look, I hear you. Seven was, was arguably like groundbreaking. And it came right? exactly. Because you're right. And that, we should relate that to God of War. Like people, when God of War came, that's why it was so groundbreaking. They're like, what the heck is this? And that's why maybe when Ragnarok comes out, they're like, this is more of the same. And maybe that's the problem I'm having with Resident Evil 8. And, and it's not much different. And it's campy. It's campy. It's goofy. See, and, and he, so that's that's kind of what I was going to say without trying to spoil too much. Because I would love to maybe do a spoiler cast once once you do finish it well, for everyone. For sure. For I know sure. It's very late, I know I'm not done yet. But is I I... My, the core mechanic of Resident Evil games that I like is that it's hard to find ammo. It's hard to kill enemies. The stories, I think, don't really make a whole ton of sense after, like, two? I mean, I, th- I like three, but three, it gets wacky as you get out into the city because they were just building more stories with this pretty base set of characters. Um, 
I think seven was groundbreaking. I think seven was honestly the most terrifying one because it introduced the first person view, the very like the very like um, hills have eyes nature of it like that honestly like is very disturbing to me. I don't know why, but like that freaks me out. And there were many times in seven where I was like legitimately like afraid to do stuff. Terrified. Um, yeah. And and I part of me liked that, but part of me was also like that literally stunted me wanting to explore more where I like that this is a little bit more campy in the sense that I don't feel that fear to like go try to explore and find collectibles and weapons and ammo and that kind of stuff. Um, I still felt that the challenge was there with some of the bosses, like the, without trying to spoil it for people, but the, the first big boss that you face when you're like out kind of on that first little stream, that was like very challenging. Like that was a huge, like, Oh, like a big challenge. It took me a couple tries to get through and that kind of stuff. Um, I just really liked it. I, I admit that it's very out there. And and yeah, the hand thing, I will totally give you that with, with uh, I'm not going to spoil more, but that was weird. I just think it was cool, man. I, I like that they brought Chris Redfield back. That's not a spoiler for anyone with he's, he's part of the story. Um, you know, I think at some point, if because we like these characters, we're going to have to just be okay with it getting weirder and weirder. Like it, it, the original series, think about it. Like you go from one and two are basically all zombies. Three becomes nemesis. Four gets into this weird village in Spain. Five is in Africa. Like at some point you just, it does have to get weird for it to continue. Um, but I think it's cool, man. I think, I think it's a beautiful game in terms of the graphics and stuff. I like that they had a different mechanic with some new types of enemies and that kind of stuff. Um, I just, I really enjoyed it, man. I, and I, I get, I hear you. I, and I think what you're saying is fair. I just, I'm on the other side of the camp that I think it was an awesome game and I enjoyed every second that I played of it. Yeah. And I've heard it's, I'm not the only one who thinks that seven's better. Like, would you still, are you still saying seven is the better overall game or do you think eight is the better of the two? Well, here's what's weird about that. I think seven was a better game in the sense that it did new stuff in a really yeah. cool way and a really great environment. But if I had to choose, I would rather play eight. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, I hear you. I, I, Cause I like, I, I felt like seven was cool, but I feel like there was also a lot of time that I couldn't. Yeah. It was, it's, like, it was I couldn't terrifying. fight back. Right. Yeah. I, I was just basically a victim or yeah. Like, uh, I didn't. There were. I, I like the monsters. Like I like the campy monsters in games when you're shooting zombies and yeah. other creatures and that kind of stuff. Chance. Then, sorry. To, I, well, yeah, no. Let me just. No, and you're good because Jose put it perfectly well. I think is which one's a better, like more of a hallmark game is seven. But which one did I simply enjoy more? Which one did I have more fun playing? It was eight. I, there is nothing more satisfying. I think I talked about it when we did our game of the year stuff than having a shotgun in Resident Evil games. And in that one specifically, and after you play it once and then you play it two or three or four times and you get the unlimited ammo and you're bullying bullies, it was just so cool to go back and replay. And I felt compelled to do that. I never felt compelled to go back and play seven. It may have again too scary isn't necessarily the right word but there were like times it felt like a chore to do certain things and that i wasn't having fun the pacing of eight it you're constant you're going you're going you're going you're killing things i i thought it was extremely well done i felt like i wanted to get the thousand out of thousand which meant a lot to me it's just so funny because i feel like i'm like i'm ready for this game to be done like that, that's where i am with resident Evil. i'm like i want to go play dark souls like this is i'm ready to move on can this be over it's just so funny you say that and i agree with you I, the shotgun is probably the best part of the game it is awesome like you just blow people away and especially if you're good and like you said, Jose, you mentioned something about where in seven, you're, or you're right, you are the victim and you're barely surviving. And and that it's truly traumatic and terrifying at points. In this game, I feel like I haven't had too much trouble with enemies. Like I just ran into my first, like one of those giant wolf beasts or whatever, when you're walking down, you know, and then I just noticed that if you stand right in front of it and guard, it doesn't hurt you. So I just stood there, guarded, shot him, guarded, shot him, guarded. And I was like, okay. But it, you, you definitely have more shooting in this game, which I guess is more fun. But I guess I'm just not as compelled with the story like you guys are. Like I just feel like, what is going on? This is just so whack. The baby pieces, the the baby baby that you run into, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, that's disturbing. And then <laughs> the Duke. I mean, the Duke's probably the best part of the game. I'm hoping there must be something big that goes on with him. But uh, shout out to him saying, "What are you buying?" or <laughs> whatever he says. An old friend would say that. So I, I, I like them hinting at Resident Evil 4, but overall, the last thing I want to say, Jose, is that I guess I just need to accept that these 
first person Ethan Winters games are just going to be a little bit more campy and wacky and it's not going to be like that traditional Resident Evil 2 and I I, th- I had more fun with 3 and I know people a lot of people hated 3 Nemesis I definitely had way more fun playing that than I am playing this I I I'm interested there is that new update coming out that is lets you play this in third person I'm wondering if that would help me or I would enjoy this game more if I could play it in third and that's really interesting to think about but go ahead jose go ahead and you can close off on this and what else you've been playing because i've just been playing that and forza horizon yeah so that's a great point that you brought that up i saw that they were going to do that update too i might go back and replay it because that that was actually my favorite like style of resident evil game so basically four and five and even six i know people hated six i thought six was okay i love that that third person view though i thought that was the best way to play the games um so i'm excited to try that The other thing I was going to say is I like that they brought a lot of puzzles back in this game because that was a key component of the real early Resident Evil games that they kind of lost into like four, five, six, seven. Um, I like that they brought that piece back um, and not super heavily, but I just I like that aspect as well. So all in all, man, I get it. And and it's here's here's the way I look at it. You could play Mass Effect every day for your entire life. Like if you like when you grow old and, and you're in a nursing home. Right, that vision. All you have to do is buy you the Mass Effect collection. By the time you finish three, you'll forget how one started, and you'll just redo it. For me, I could do that with the Resident Evil games, right? Like I just love those kinds of games. So I totally get if you don't absolutely love it, and I'm I'm bummed to hear that you say you just want to be done with it. But I also understand because there are times I play games that you love that I'm like I just want to be done with it, um, right? So um, that being said, what I've been playing very little. Um, I'll tell you about that when we get to our food stuff at the end of the episode. But I will say I'm, I've pretty far into tunic uh really cool man i i totally get why tunic was a banger in your book i really like it a lot super cool indie story um i've actually really liked the mechanic of like only understanding parts of that like instruction book and i've actually gone back and like scoured it a lot of times which is really cool right now i'm on the like mole rat guy boss that's like underground man i cannot beat him he is really tough for me so uh, I'm trying to work through that. But other than that, I haven't played a whole lot because I'm going back to work and stuff like that. So I'll pass it over to Bubble Boy. Um, I have been playing GTA 5 on my what third and a half console generation now because I, I played it on the 360, played it on the 1, tried it with 1X enhancements, and then, man, I'm a sucker, and I paid my $20 and got it for the – Series X, um, not full price. It's still going for sixty. My goodness, but I got a physical copy um, for twenty dollars, and so and it's cool. It, I, 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 we have talked about how like that game has everything, and it's so incredibly well done. Um, it, it is. I'm not going to say bad things about it. It the controls do not just age. terrible, just <laughs> terrible controls. Yep, well, terrible controls. And some of the interfaces and the way you have to like pause to and get then to choose like, the map, get your armor to get to on. The map oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. It, that's it, the it, thing. That's what about loading? Is loading much improved? Oh God, yes. There oh, almost is isn't any. Nice. I mean, it's and, and it it's, runs and looks great. I'm incredible. assuming. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, the controls. Yeah, and so oh, many things gosh. that that are so well done, and it it this just hit me but i'm thinking like all those crazy partnerships that we were talking about earlier what if what if rockstar went to playground and we're like hey will you guys help us with all the car um mechanics and getting those different with us that'd be really cool but um it's fun it, it i love trevor is never going to get old um playing as him is so much just fun a fantastic and just the way performance. they Exactly. And and not that Franklin and Michael weren't great too, because they absolutely were. Um, I love that dynamic and I want to see that more in games moving forward. Um, that really, I can't think of many that have done that since yeah. where that you have unique characters, the core mechanics are all the same. There's some that are really good at this, some that are really good at that. And then each one specializes in something. Yeah. Um, it's great. And those heists are so much fun um it's so, a great game it's it's so yep. so good chance let yep. me ask and then of quick. course uh what for six for gta6 would you rather be like this a cast of characters or would you rather focus on one like nico and uh, oh no that? cast for sure okay. and not too big i think anything more than three would be too big i think um two that's what she said could yeah <laughs> did she though did she um 
but I yeah I do hope it's another cast of characters. Outside of that, um, I've been I am so close. I'm six days away from getting my Forza Horizon Five. Get every challenge there is on a series achievement. Um, just in time for then the Hot Wheels one will take over. Um, that game never is boring ever. Period. I just I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'm just doing this for the achievement, and then. But play for another fun. two hours doing and i'm like there's nothing to work for yeah. i'm simply having fun i'm playing with these hot wheels cars my n7 jeep trail cat continues to get likes and downloads and uses every single day i've made like 10 million credits off of that thing um just good i played fall guys for a little bit um it was fun it was cool i would like to play with you all cora loves it i think it's cool how if you have two controllers that are both going at the same time, they both go and can kind of like mess with each other. So she likes to just do all the jumping and diving. I do the controlling. Um, it's fun. There's another one. Microtransactions are genius. Um, I'd spend a dollar if the Halo, there is a Halo guy, Jose. It, it was like a day. Uh, he was there for a day. I think it was a free download. I've seen him running around. I would pay five dollars easily tonight. But was it that? Is it the if pink Master Chief one? Because no. I've seen that one. I haven't seen the regular Master I've Chief. I've seen yet. yep, just a straight up Master Chief, green, gold, all that stuff. So, um, and then lastly, what I watched, I went to see Thor with my mom in court. Thor, um, Love and Thunder. Um, it was good. It was. It's worth your time, worth your money. I, I would wait though, personally, since you guys both have Disney Plus. It was good if you are a fan of the comics. Gore, the God Butcher, who um, is the bad guy in that, that Christian Bale plays. Christian Bale does an incredible job with him. I felt like the writing behind it wasn't great because if you have read the comics, Gore is a really, really compelling bad guy. And I won't spoil anything and like why he's doing what he's doing, why he's a God killer. Um, I thought like, I felt like they could have done a better job with that. Um, but it was worth seeing. And Taika Waititi is just a genius. So it it was fun. I liked it. Very good on what we've been playing, guys. I wanted to do a quick little days, a quick little segment right here. This will just take a couple, a minute. Okay. I wanted to ask you, because I remember seeing this on a tweet before, and I'm very curious how you would say it. Okay. So when you look at the Xbox controllers and these buttons right here, if you had to list them out instinctively, how do you list out these buttons? A, B, X, Y. Okay, Jose, how do you say it? I'd probably say either that or X, B, A, Y. X, B, A, Y, probably. Oh, okay. So I'm with Chance all the way. It is A, B, X, Y if I have to list out the letter buttons, the face buttons there. A, B, X, Y is the correct way, Jose. I don't know what you were talking about. And I saw some people on the Twitter poll doing – who starts with like Y or – well, from a why would be weird. I, oh yeah, I guess like down, some people like would yeah, we'll go that way or go Y X B A. I can yeah. see it just is hard to say A B X Y. Yeah, like I just, you're used to saying I, that alphabetically. Yeah, I, I do A B X Y too. So I just wanted because it, then it'd be more thoughts. interesting to see what PlayStation people say. Do they do? Yeah, X, well, what, circle, you, what, what would you do? Triangle. Tell me what you do. Well, because I'm so used to the the way the Xbox has it, the A B X Y. I do think triangle X. When I say X, I know I they know, say it's, it's a cross. A cross. I know, but it's they name too. everything wrong. So no, I agree. I, I oh, X it's... circle square triangle. I, I'm I'm with you the same way, Jose. What about you with the PlayStation controller? You do it weird. Uh, yeah, you I, do it like. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I'm I'm trying. I don't. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever done that for any system. So I was like, how would really? I do it? I guess. I, you know, I think about it in the terms of like. So you go back to the original NES controller. It would just be A B because there were only two buttons, and that then that changed when we got the. Super Nintendo, right? You got the four buttons, and so it was stupid then too. Sorry. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I, I I think I think the more of it, I probably would do the same thing. I would do A B X Y or so circles or sorry cross circle tr square triangle. Probably, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. And if that's when, hard. the day that Nintendo can get on board and put the A and the B, oh and my X, god, y, don't they, I preach, bro? And so on, here, here's here's the problem. Why though. Nintendo? Why do you have to do because, that? Because Chance, I'm looking at the Super Nintendo when they have it, and it is I, the stupid B A Y great, X. And great, it's, and it's the same as like now how ugh, it's there's terrible. there's not like first person shooters have a very 
like but B was your main button. But so it should have been ugh. X or square is reload, right? Triangle or Y is change your gun. A is typically jump. Like R is yep. shoot. L is look down the the iron sight kind of stuff. Like there is yeah, some uniformity I mean, that I'm looking back when I'm playing ugh. GTA five that didn't exist a long time ago. And it shows I'm reloading with B, I think on GTA five. Oh, it's I'm terrible. Like, yeah. It's, it's just terrible. Awful. And, and you, yeah. you know, what you can do to circumvent that. You can just go to your elite and I like, know, re- I, know, I know it sucks. I know, I know it sucks. I, it, I know. It, so it still yeah, sucks. I can, it's a first world problem and I'll complain about it. No, I completely agree. And looking at the PlayStation one guys, if it's a cross, why didn't they make it a cross? Why didn't they just do this? All they had to do was rotate the X over like this and it would be a cross PlayStation. He's absolutely right. What are you guys doing? Anyway, guys, let's close the show. Like, well, And it's also, cause I kind of, <laughs> it's not a shape, right? Like every other one's a shape. I, so I think they were sitting there in a production but or in like a, they were like a shape. triangle, circle, uh, square. Um, uh, what could they have used? They were like uh, star. And then shut up, Jimmy. Yeah, star cross. Good. Star's oh. a good idea, actually. That's what they should have done. <laughs> Again, I, uh, XRT. It's all it takes. <laughs> let's close the show like we always do with the best food we had this week would anybody like to go first on this one jose let's start with you this week and then we'll yeah go i'll go first so i had a unique situation this this last week we um we took a mini trip because i was going back to work i went back to work on wednesday we're recording thursday night i'm sorry yeah anyway um because of that my wife was like can we do one last quick trip before you go back to work i was like sure so we went down to uh, monument lake do you know where that's at either of you i did not for the record i did not know where that was at Monument Lake I mean, is just. I think, I think I know because of the picture you sent. Is it down in the springs? Isn't there a monument? It's, it's, it's outside of Trinidad, Colorado. Trinidad, Colorado is in the very south corner of uh, Colorado. It's about six it's hours also from. Also, the what capital of the world? Sex change capital of the world. Um, we went there because it, my mother in law was that born. Buena there. Vista? No, Are it's not Buena Vista. About? No, um, no. Anyway. Um, so we went up there and uh, we went, we spent one night on the lake, which was really beautiful, by the way. If you ever wanted just a cool getaway that we stayed in their little hotel room, it was pretty cheap. Uh, really cool lake. We went fishing, that kind of stuff. And then the next day we came back down to Trinidad and hung out and saw some childhood sites and that kind of stuff. Saw Main Street. Trinidad is actually now this like really big art town, believe it or not. Like they have a bunch of art galleries and festivals and that kind of stuff. Um, and interestingly, quick economic aside, I know we're talking about food. They have a ton of dispensaries there because marijuana was not legal in New Mexico. So if you could go to Trinidad, which is right by the border, they I mean, literally like 25% of the entire businesses in the city were dispensaries. There was one part where of the street where it was like eight shops in a row were all dispensaries. Crazy. Anyway, so when we were down there, we got – I, I, I Trinidad was cool. I had a great time down there. You know, I don't know if I'll need to go back anytime soon, I'll be honest with you. But I had literally like a two days straight of banger meals. Like just everything I ate was a fantastic. The first night we went to a pizza place in Stonewall, Colorado, which was on the way to Monument Lake. Amazing pepperoni pizza, like just plain pepperoni, but just like super crispy on the bottom, delicious, like not too greasy. The next day uh, we got to Trinidad. I had a chili cheese foot long hot dog. I put it in our nerd chat. It was literally bigger than my hands. It was this giant chili cheese bur- or hot dog, which was awesome. The next night, I had an open face green chili burger, like with homemade Colorado green chili and then fries on top and cheese. That was fantastic. And then to top it all off, we went to this place called Habaneros. And I was like, okay, Mexican restaurant. It's going to be delicious. You know what it was? It was a, literally a clone of Tacos Rapidos, literally a clone. So, like, I was like, breakfast burrito and three rolled taquitos because they're fantastic. And it tasted just like the one on Federal, man. I was so happy. You can ask my wife. She was making fun of me. But I, just, I ate like a king. Like literally ate like a king for two days. So shout out to Trinidad, Colorado, and all those and places Trinidad, if you're down there. Yeah, Trinidad, Colorado. Who'd have thunk? Who would have thought? So I had a great I had a great week of food. I'll go next, Bubble Boy. I my the best food I had this week was for my mom's birthday. We celebrated Sunday. And I think I sent you guys a picture. It was from Blackjack Pizza. And I know you guys like to talk trash about it. It was delicious. I got their Santa Fe style pizza, the one with the green chili and chicken and onions. And I think there was something else on there, but I don't remember. I did say no olives because olives. Where's the closest blackjack to us? 
It's off of right there, uh, Julian Garrison. Right there, Jose. Right down the road. Oh, snap. Bad. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm gonna go check it out. The, their cheese me. sticks. I like their cheese sticks. No, and this pizza, delicious. You'll love the cheese on this pizza. It's like they added a different kind of cheese in, in addition to the mozzarella. Delicious. Santa Fe pizza. Try that out. Also got bacon and sausage from my mom. Delicious. And then a standard cheese. Shout out to Blackjack Pizza. I'm not going to lie. It was fantastic. Happy birthday, mom. Shout out. Bubble Boy was the best food you had this week. Um, so I had two. I had to put an oldie but goodie on there. I had Taco Bell breakfast the other day, and I know that doesn't get a lot of love, but I got the combo meal. It was a uh, the breakfast crunch wrap uh, bacon standard, and the sauce they have in there is just so good. Um, comes with two Cinnabon delights. I don't know how you beat that. Those things are fantastic. And then the Cinnabon delight coffee that it comes with, it was just perfect. It was on that day that was like the one random super rainy, wet, I think it was Monday, cold day we had out here. So I got hot coffee. The guy was even, he's like, oh, here's your iced coffee. I was like, oh, uh, 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 I mean hot. He's like, nobody gets hot anymore. It's summer. Why did you get this hot? And I was like, well, it's like 70 degrees right now. It's pretty cold or coldish, right? But um, so it was fantastic, cheap, just good. And then, of course, um, I got... Cinnamon Toast Crunch Cinnamon Roll Cereal, which I said earlier reminds me of the Little Debbie um, Oatmeal Cream Pie Cereal in the texture, in the crispness. It's it's wonderful. It's literally those with a cinnamon um, flavor to it. It's eaten cinnamon rolls in cereal form. It's fantastic. Absolutely love it. Of course, got the family size. Um, it's a must buy of worth course. your time. Uh, Do you think it would taste as good in the Stanley Cup? Oh, better. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Bubble Boy, you've inspired me right after we end here. I'm driving down to Walmart and I have yeah. to buy a box right now yep. because yep. I was at King Supers. Of course, they have Kaka cereal selection there. You got to go to Walmart. You guys don't even waste your time anywhere else. This has been Xbox Record This Episode 63. Thank you so much for listening to our rants about cable versus the internet. Uh, what we would do with the Stanley Cup. And please, if you have any other cool, uh, good old days ideas or warm up questions, write into us at Xbox, record this at gmail.com, or you can write to us anywhere on social media at Xbox, record this. Chipotle Bear, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, Chipotle underscore Bear, or on Instagram, Chipotle Bear, all one word. Again, always love chatting with the fans. Hope to hear from Bacon or Biz or Claire or anybody, even my mom. Shout out to mom. I know you're listening. Uh, you know, always happy to hear from the fans, and uh, you still got to let us know. We got to do the Top Gun master list. So, are we going yeah, to each our own merch it, or are we going to just let chaos ensue? You got to tell us, people. I was going to say, you know, yeah, we didn't get any responses, so that's why we didn't do it this I week. Know. So yeah, please we gotta, let us know, Bubble Boy. Where fans. can people find you if they can? I don't know. Yeah, I think I, I'm trying to think. Did Taco I, Bell breakfast, baby. That's where yeah. you can find him. Yeah, I'll be in the Taco Bell breakfast line. That's for sure. All right. Sounds good. As always, cord cutters. See you online. See you online. See you online. See you online. He gave us a legacy. You make it sound like a cult, okay? And from everything you've told me about Chaz, he sounds like a kook. You bite your tongue. Chaz Reinhold is not a kook. He is a brave and a decent man. He is a pioneer. He lived with his mother till he was 40. She tried to poison his oatmeal. Erroneous. Erroneous. Erroneous on both counts. Erroneous. <laughs> Erroneous on both counts. Xbox, record this. As a podcast created by Daniel Walensic. You can follow him at Daddy Diwali on all social media. The assistant to the co-host is Jose Martinez, and you can follow him at Chipotle underscore bear on Twitter. The assistant to the assistant to the co-host is Chance Siegel, and you can follow him at Bubbleboy N7. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. If you'd like to find out more about the show, visit XboxRecordThis.com.